the next pro program is very different from uh, this one because uh, while the Nobet Kit program is implemented in Hungary in a in a context where um, the policy environment is not really supportive of inclusion. Um, the next uh, speaker um, works in a very inclusive and very supportive policy environment. I would like to welcome Rory O'Sullivan, who is the school head of Key Leicester College for Further Education in Dublin, Ireland. And um, he is going to introduce uh, their own uh, multi-inclusion uh, approach uh, in the school. They are including students in their vocational education and training institution uh, with very different inclusion needs. And I also um, think that he's going to talk about what inclusion as such means to him. Uh, he's a native speaker, so I think that we can uh, listen to his, his definition of inclusion very attentively. Rory, can you join us? Yeah. Rory? Yes, Esther. Great. Hello, everybody. Please put on your video, uh, Rory. Yep. Am I there? Yeah, but you need to put on your video. There we go. Okay, I'll start my presentation now. Not starting. Oh, there we are. Now, <clears throat> hello everybody from uh, Dublin, Ireland. On this, our national holiday weekend, it's St. Patrick's Day on Sunday. So uh, Ireland is turning itself even more green uh, this weekend. And we have uh, a lot of Irish people living around the world and they're turning various parts of the world green. So today I'm just going to talk about um, our approach to inclusion in our uh, vet college. Now in Ireland, uh, vocation education and training happens at, at the post-secondary level. So all of our students have finished school or are of uh, school finishing age and above. So um, I'm going to just begin by giving you a profile of the students in Kilester College of Further Education. And I should say that in Ireland, uh, vocation education and training is called further education and training. It's only a different name, but it means the same thing to everybody. Um, I will talk a little bit, as Esther said, about um, what we mean by inclusion or what we take it to mean. Um, and we will talk about the three stages as we see it. Access to VET programs, successful participation in VET programs, and rather than e equal opportunities, I like to think in terms of equal chance of success. So we'll begin. Um, for the current year, um, we would have 360 full-time day students, about 50 part-time day students, 850 uh, students uh, taking part-time courses in the evening, giving us a total of 1,260 per week. Of that, 81 day students declared a learning support need, which works out to be about 20.5% of our daytime students. And you'll notice I call it a learning support need, not a special educational need or anything like that. They have declared a learning support need. Of that 81, 25 require additional learning support and the remainder are supported in the classroom through inclusive teaching and learning methodologies. More about our profile here. Our average age ranges from 17 years to 82 years and the average age of our full-time students is 26. Our part-time students during the day would range in age from 21 years to 84 years and an average age of 45. And we have people from um, 27 different countries. I think my slides have gotten a little askew, so I apologize for that. So we have eight EU students from eight EU countries, 19 non-EU countries, 27 in total, 20 EU students on full-time courses and two on part-time courses, 22 EU citizens in total. And these be EU citizens, obviously other than Irish citizens. And we would have in total 30 non-EU citizens. So we have 52 what we call international students um, in our college. Before enrolment, before coming to us, 
31, uh, just over 31% of our students had upper secondary education and um, or had come from upper secondary education, I should say, and for over 40% had come from unemployment. 49, almost half of our students have completed upper secondary education and just less than 14% have completed um, lower secondary education. Now, the important thing about, before I go into our definition, the important thing about our students, you would have students with disabilities, we would have people from unemployed, people who want to return to work, we would have people who want to change careers, people who have um, just left prison, um, who are in, coming to us from the homeless, homeless Initiative, the Drugs Court Initiative. We have many of our students, our parents. So we would have people, we'd have to be sensitive to their childcare needs. So basically you could describe this population of Calestra College as, a, as Irish society, or everybody in Irish society. And a key part of, of um, what we're talking about here in inclusion is that everybody needs support at some stage in their life. And we look at, as, at all of our students needing support in one way or another during their time with us. It might only be something small, it might be something large. So some of our supports are because of life events, some of our supports are because of specific learning needs. But in the end, we are all vulnerable people needing support at different times and for different reasons. So just to put words on what we mean by inclusion, Inclusive education is about improving the quality of learning for all students by dealing with all barriers to accessing, participating and succeeding in learning, whoever experiences them and wherever they are located throughout all aspects of our college, our culture, our policies and our practice. And in Ireland and in many countries in the world, this is called universal design in education. Or another way to put it, if our students can't learn the way we teach, then we must teach the way our students learn. Some of the key outcomes in inclusive education, and this would be something that I would feel very strongly about. A lot of, a lot of particularly in Ireland, a lot of the approach to people with disabilities is a caring role. We are minding or looking after people with disabilities. And I would like to move from that position to one of active citizenship, that we are facilitating people uh, to participate fully as to their fullest potential in being an active citizen of, the, of Irish society. To facilitate full participation and to level the playing field through our supports. But this is the key. By, by, once we've provided the support for you, we expect you to perform. We do not re reduce standards. We do not, we do not change our expectations. If anything, we have, we would have, you would have the same expectations on you as a student with us if you are receiving support as if you did not. And what we would like to see at the end is that a student re receiving learning support should have the same outcomes, either to progress to further study or employment as a student not receiving support. So let's begin with the first point of um, contact with us. You're making an application to our course. The conversation about learning support begins with um, our enrollment events, our uh, public open days, which start in February before the course beginning in September. So we begin the conversation a few months before your course starts. One of the things you have to bear in mind around admissions policy and procedures is when do you say no? It's all well and good in, in an inclusive environment. You're, you assume that you're going to say yes, but sometimes when you say yes, you're actually in danger of setting a student up to fail, and that's not a good thing. One of the first things in terms of dealing with barriers was in relation to the entry requirements for our courses. In the past, the practice would have been to have uh, identified formal entry requirements for our courses. We've eliminated that and we've, and we've changed it to a recognition of our learning format called capacity to successfully participate. Now you can 
your capacity to successfully participate could be based on um, a formal uh, learning experience, but it does not have to be. There's also a self-declaration model. In other words, we allow you the opportunity to declare a learning support need. It is not, but you also have the right not to declare, learning, to declare a learning support need if you like. And our learning support is based on a, what we call a functional deficit model. Depending on the curricular demands of the course you apply for, the learning support strategy will be different from one course to the next. Our admissions policy was a, was a key change and we changed entry requirements to being not, not formal. The evaluation of the application was done at the interview and we learned to trust the course coordinator's judgment that the person will be interviewed by the course coordinator who would be very familiar with the particular demands of the course and they would make a judgment as to whether somebody had the capacity to do the course or not. Then there's the process of offering places and like many countries um, we are subject as a, as a college we are um, subject to national targets and outcomes targets so you can have for admission, you can have a first come first serve approach, you can have a random selection of applicants or an order of merit. The danger when you have targets is a point of creaming off. If you are being, if you are being held account, you know, to account or to have a target for performance, the target, the temptation would be to cream off on order of merit. But in Kilester College, we use first come first served. And there is that usual clash between accountability, performativity and ethical duty. To a student. So access to a course, a definition of access, is the process by which a learner can participate in a program on the basis of recognition of all of their learning, that he or she can demonstrate the capacity to successfully participate with the appropriate level of support on the academic, practical and work placement element of the program and achieve the award upon completion. Moving on to participation, and I'm conscious of time so I'm going to move a little more quickly if that's okay and I'm happy to take questions after. Inclusive teaching and learning methodologies, all of the staff, all of the teachers um, and the non-teaching staff in Kilester College were trained in inclusive teaching and learning methodologies. And it is an ongoing uh, continuous professional development or training matter for all staff. We invested heavily in the use of ICT with web-based learning, such packages like Moodle and Google Apps. We have an access officer who coordinates all learning support activity and we have a specialist disability support officer who visits us using the City of Dublin Education and Training Board Disability Support Service. We also have a care team in the college to coordinate all of this activity. We have learned to develop, to put great importance on the communications module where students with disabilities would learn the, the would build capacity in discussions in class to be able to become their own advocates. So we have inclusive active access and inclusive participation, um, but the work placement element, which is on a mandatory part or a required part of a lot of our courses, is very difficult because achieving work placement is in the gift of the employers, not us. And sometimes it's difficult to get employers to cooperate. Finally, we get to equal chance of success. We have inclusive assessment methodology where you can end a state certification. There is a, there is a procedure where all, all state colleges have to be able to provide reasonable accommodation in assessment methodology. And we need to move now from reasonable accommodation assessment methodology to universal design and assessment, where we design our assessment from the beginning to be inclusive. And we would aim that all students should have an equal chance of success to progress to further study or employment. And finally, as I conclude, I just want to pay tribute to the staff of Kilester College, the teaching administrative maintenance staff, who it is for their commitment to inclusive education and learning every day. I am here to tell you about their great work. And as you can see from my last slide, a happy St. Patrick's Day to you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rory. It was really fantastic. Um, actually, um, it's also a national holiday in Hungary at the moment. Today, uh, we have the oh. national holiday. So this is such a oh. weekend, and this is why it's such an, a very important webinar today. We can um, not just uh, celebrate our national holidays, but we can also celebrate inclusion. Um, we do have um, 
poll questions. We forgot the one about um, your personal involvement, um, but um, we can do both. And we also have a question uh, that um, is asked from Rory. Uh, okay. Can you elaborate more on inclusive assessment methodologies? Okay, um, inclusive assessment methodologies. Um, an example might be, we had a student who was uh, completely deaf, um, was fluent in Irish Sign Language, but had significant literacy difficulties in English. But our quality assurance requirements uh, require us to issue assessment briefs in English. So what we had to do there was we got the sign language interpreter to interpret the assignment brief into um, into a camera, so we were, made a video of the assessment, gave the video to the student, they went off and did the assessment, came back, and they signed it using sign language into a video. The interpreter changed that into English, and that's what the teacher marked. That was just one example. Is that okay, Esther? Yeah, well, it was not my question. It was a question in the uh, in the chat. But um, if not, then I oh, think yes. that Vate is going to ask more questions. He says it's okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. That's very good. I see um, Andrea has asked a question. Am I familiar with the index of inclusion from Booth and Ainsco? Yes, I am. The definition of inclusion that I gave you is actually Booth and Ainsco's definition. Yes, and there is another question. Um, can you think of other words for deficit model and disability support service? Well, I don't like disability support service because I think it's too narrow, because everybody needs learning support at some stage. Um, um, my, my, I don't use disability support in my college. I use learning support. Um, I don't know if that's if there's a better term out there, I'm, I'm certainly open to suggestions, but that's the reason I use learning support. Thank you. I don't see any more questions, but if there are questions coming up, then we can uh, do it after the presentations. Um, okay. But so far in the two presentations that we had, um, there were, although they were very different, for me, uh, there were some similarities. Uh, first one was that, um, you are aiming at uh, making students the owners of their own learning rather than teaching them. So it means that it's a facilitation process by the professionals. And uh, in the case of Nobet, it's also the parents. And in my view, as far as I understand these programs, uh, it builds on trust um, in the learner and also trust in the professional. And also, uh, what Rory, you didn't elaborate on too much, but uh, if people are reading your case study, they will see that there is a need to prepare the professionals for this facilitation role and uh, to be able to um, answer all the demands of this trust that you are putting in them. Uh, I really hope that um, this is more or less a nice recap. If you don't agree with it, then speak up, Andrea and Rory. Yeah, no, Esther, that's perfectly fine. I think the most important, I suppose, point, definitely ongoing training for on teachers and methodology is, is crucial and that it never stops because the profile of students and profile of support needs for students changes on a year, every year. It's totally different every year. Um, but I think the key is that we, we locate the, the, we do not locate the difficulty with the student, but in, but with us, the difficulty is ours in uh, to in make sure that the student is included in the curriculum. Well, thank you. Uh, well, there was a question about uh, the, uh, the the length of the program for each student. Um, how all long does the Irish program last for each student? Yeah, all programs um, are for are for. Um, measured in academic years. So they start in at the beginning of, of September and they continue until the end of May. Um, that would be an academic year in, in Ireland. Some courses are one year long and some are two years long. Thank you. 